Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a river of life that I'm releasing. And I am the source of that river. And as you continue to open your life, stretch out to me. That river of life is going to run like a torrent within you. And where there's a river, of, a torrent of rushing water, it not only finds a way to flow, but there's breakthrough. There's release because where there's a torrent, it shifts things, it moves things, it breaks through things because of the power that is within the torrent, within the water. And I am that river of life. I am that torrent that is within you. And as you open your life to me, as you stretch out to me, that river of life rushes within you and breaks through and brings release, not only in your life, but also to those around you in situations in front of you. Because the power that is at work in you is greater than any power that can be at work around you. And in these days where the enemy seeks to suppress the, my spirit, where the enemy seeks to suppress my kingdom, where the enemy seeks to suppress my people, the church, I am rising up. I will not be held back. When the enemy comes like a flood, I release my spirit to overcome every opposition, to overcome every challenge because that is my nature. That is my character. I will not be held back. I will not be thwarted. I will not be resisted and overcome because I am the one who overcomes. And because I'm the one who overcomes and because I am the overcomer, this river of living water within you, the river of life of who I am, enables you to overcome, enables you to be an overcomer that knows no limits and no bounds. And as you take hold of who I am in a fresh way and as you allow me to work and move in your heart, in your heart and life, not just in these few days of prayer and fasting, but in the days and the times ahead, as you continue to stretch out your life before me and allow me to consume every fibre of your being with who I am, then I as the river of life are gonna throw not a flow, not only through you, but there's gonna be breakthroughs and release around you. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your heads, O you ancient doors. Lift up your heads, O you ancient gates. For the King of glory, the King of glory, the King of glory is coming, is entering. The King of glory is being released on earth as it is in heaven. The natural looks a challenge. The natural in some way seems impossible. But in the very moments of the natural impossibilities and challenges, they're the very moments that you see me move, you see me work, you see my glory come and change things from what looks like one thing into another because that is who I am. If you take hold of the news, if you take hold of all the things on social media, if you take hold of all the conspiracy theories out there, you will be confused. You will be double-minded. You, you will not know whether to turn to the left or to the right or who is right or who is wrong. 
But if you turn to me in the middle of all the noise and the voices, if you quiet yourself before me, yield yourself to me. Then the still, small voice of my spirit that is like the power of a rushing river speaks into the depth of your being and enables you to discern what is of my spirit and what is not. Yield. Your life, your mind, your opinions, your understanding, yield everything to who I am. And as you yield, as you surrender, as you bring everything under my Lordship, which is so essential in these days, otherwise you will be deceived and you won't even realise it because that is the nature of deception. You don't know that you are deceived. And so as you yield yourself to me and to the voice of my spirit, and you silence all of the arguments about this, that and the other, as you silence yourself before me and wait on me, and yield to me. I will show you, I will teach you the voice of my spirit, what is of me and what is not of me. The days and the times ahead the years to come will be filled with more and more noise of everything that's going on and everybody's thoughts and opinions and stories and and in the middle of all of that those who are going to stand those who are going to stay the course those who are going to keep on track are those that are yielding their lives to me. Because I see what you don't see. I discern what you don't understand. I look at what is taking place. And when you have your ear to the ground in the natural, you'll just hear the rumblings and the turbulence and the shakings of the natural. But if you incline your ear to my spirit and to my heart and my voice, then you will not be shaken in the midst of turmoil. You will not be shaken in the midst of challenge. You will not be shaken even in the midst of persecution. Incline your ear by inclining your life to me. These are not days to be given to all kinds of things. In times of comfort, there is time for everything. But when there's an emergency sound and the bell is ringing, when people are crying out in fear, apprehension, anxiety, where they don't know where the world's going. In a time of emergency, there isn't time to say, there is time for everything. We can do whatever we please because there's time. The days you're in, the time you're living in, requires a wholehearted devotion to who I am. 
without that, you will end up without even realising it, standing on the banks of what I'm doing, thinking that you are in the middle of it, when actually you're standing on the side with many opinions and views and angles. But unless you allow me, unless you yield daily, even throughout the day, unless you stay yielded to me, you will easily be caught offside. And that is not my heart and my will for any person, whether saved or unsaved. My heart is that all men, all people would come to know me. I died once and for all. That is my heart. That is my longing. That is what I want for every person. My heart is for every person who is alive on the face of the planet. It doesn't matter what age, what generation, what colour skin, what gender, whatever confusion they might be in, no matter what position or religion they have, my heart is for every person on this planet, that every person would come to know me as their personal living Saviour. So there's, it's not time to be caught up in sides. Who's right? Who's wrong? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It's time to yield every facet of your life fully to me. So that you can walk with me, keep in step with me, keep in alignment with me, keep in tune with me to stay at one with me. To yield is to continue to remain and abide and to surrender to who I am. There are many winds blowing. There are many forces at work. There are many agendas that are trying to be played out at this time in many different ways. But there's only one plan that counts. There's only one agenda that matters. And that's my plan and my purposes and what I am doing right now in the earth. My kingdom has already come on earth. And every person that surrenders to me and is born again by my Spirit has, then has the kingdom within them. And as you yield to me, as you surrender to me day by day, you're saying, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to be number one in my life. I want you to be on the throne of my life. I want you to be in charge of my life. I want you to be in charge of my mind. I want you to be in charge of the decisions. I want you to be in charge of the finances, the money, the material possessions. I want you to be in charge of everything that belongs to you because you purchased me with your blood. I I belong to you. I don't belong to myself any longer. I belong to you. I am yours and you are mine and I yield to you, Jesus. That is the heart cry and the longing that is needed in my church at this time. A church that lives on its knees from a heart point of view that the heart condition of my people is living on their knees before me saying, God, I yield to you. I surrender to you. I don't even want to live today without you, without being full of your Spirit, without being led by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, you must be in me today, be in Lord today in every way because I want to walk with you, because I want to know you, because I want to serve you, because I want to honour you, because I want you to have the glory in terms of what you do. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to go off to the left or to the right. I don't want to be lukewarm in any way because I don't want to be spat out of your mouth. Father, I know that you are a loving Father, but at the same time, you're the Almighty God. 
And I thank You that in love, You have done so much for me, so much for us. In love, You have... You have wiped the slate clean. You've given us a totally new start. You've treated us in a way that we just do not deserve. You have loved us with an unfailing love. And Father, our response, our response to You is a wholehearted one. Father, take what is Yours. I can't pray what is on Your heart this morning, but what I do know is this morning, God's heart for you and I and for us as a church is like the rushing power of of a river that is rushing. That's the nature of His love for you and I. That's the nature of His heart for you and I. That's the nature of His heart for the world, for people, because God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. that no one should perish, but instead have eternal life. And and God's ringing the emergency bell. God is sounding the emergency siren. He's blowing the trumpet from heaven saying, guys, do you understand the time that you're in? Do you understand the days that you are living in? There is no time for everything anymore a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of the other. No, the time that is at hand is a critical time. It's a time to align everything in your heart and your life with me and to me. It's a time to yield daily to me. And as you lift your head and you lift your hands and you lift your heart and your life to me, whatever troubles, whatever difficulties are going on, lift them to me. Lift them like you're taking hold of the stuff, the issues, the challenges, the whatever might be the negativities of life. You can grab a hold of them and pick them up and lift them up to me and say, Father, here am I. Here's all the stuff going on in me. Here are the challenges. Here are the difficulties. Here's all the things that are trying to overcome me. These are the things that are trying to press me down. These are the things that are saying, you're not free. You're not forgiven. You're not accepted. You're not blameless. You're not holy. You're not righteous. Father, I take all of those things and I throw them back at You right now because Your Word says, that You have loved me with an everlasting love and that You have won the victory for me so that I can take a hold of everything You've done for me. I can take a hold of everything in me so that I don't need to live under anything, but I can live over all of those things. And Father, I thank You for the revelation of that in every one of our hearts and lives. I thank You for the the, the Spirit of faith coming upon us as a people in a fresh way to take hold of everything that You have said You have done that we can live in the good of. Holy Spirit, teach us, show us more and more and more daily as we yield to You how to live in the fullness, in the abundance of the life that You have given us. Let the richness of Your Word and the power of Your Holy Spirit be the governing thing in our lives, the governance, the governor in our lives going forward. Just believe God's saying, make space for me, make space for me, make space for me, make space for me. Make space in your life because when you make space, I will fill it with who I am. Father, I ask You that You would fill every home right now, if You haven't already, with Your presence. Father, I just pray You would fill every home with Your glory, 
your tangible presence, the tangible nature of who you are being revealed into every home, every life. Father, I thank You. Don't just want a nice word this morning. So we, we do church and we go to church and then we kind of switch the telly off and say, well, that was a nice time. Father, I thank You that You are on the move, that You are at work. I thank You, Father, that You are relentless in Your love and Your passion for us to know You and, and for You to know us and, and how You want us to live in this world. You've called us as the church to continue the ministry of Jesus on earth. He started something. He then, when He went up to heaven, He sent His Holy Spirit on those 120 or so believers. They were baptised in Your Spirit to continue the ministry and the work that You started. Father, let us be one of those churches. Let us be people that are so full and baptised and, and yielding to Your Spirit that we would continue the ministry of who You are, the ministry of Jesus on earth like that rushing water that couldn't stop Him then. The Pharisees couldn't stop Him with all the death threats and, and, and plans they were trying to take Him out constantly through His ministry. They couldn't thwart Him because of the, the rushing water that was at work in Him, the plans and the purposes you had for Him to fulfil, the way He yielded to you daily. The enemy's plans through the Pharisees could not stop Him. And Father, in the same way, I thank You that You have put Your Spirit in us for us to stand up in who we are in Christ. Not with our heads down, not looking down saying, woe is me. Father, I thank You for that revelation of the truth that there is no woe is me any longer because of who You are in us. When You look at us, You say, You are a child of mine. I have made You worthy. I have made You acceptable. You are blameless in my sight. You are holy in my sight. As You stand before me, lift Your head because my face is towards You. My face shines upon You. My hand is upon You. My hand stretches out towards You. Stand as a child of God, confidently, boldly knowing that my love has been released to You, for You. And I go before You, I go behind You, I go to the sides. I am around You as Your protection, as Your fortress, as Your strong warrior. There is nothing that can resist You and come against You that can overcome. Because in You, I am the overcomer. I am Your victory. I am Your breakthrough. I am Your hope. I am Your life. I am who I say I am in You. And You are one of my beloved. Kingdom faith, stand in who I've called you to be as the people of God. Stand in who I've called you to be as sons and as, daughter of my, as daughters of mine. Rise up and be those revival people I've called you to be. Rise up and be that breakthrough people I've called you to be. Don't mess with the shallows any longer. Don't say there's time for everything. Don't just stroll around in life saying, well, I'll come back to church when the building's open. This isn't about a building being open. This is about yielding your life to me, whether there's a building open or not, whether stuff in society is going your way or not, whether you like what's happening or not. This is not about that. This is about who I am. And as you yield to me, as you surrender to me, that allows my spirit not just to rest upon you, but to work in you, to rush through you and to rush from you into the surroundings, the people, the circumstances around you. Don't allow the enemy to belittle you any longer. He is a liar and the father of lies. But I am the true and living God, the father of truth, the God of truth. And I'm not a man that I should lie. So yield afresh to my spirit. Yield afresh to my word in your life. Meditate on me daily. Take time to abide with me, remain in me. Don't let the issues of life 
take every moment of your day. Don't let the conversations of life take up all your time and energy. Don't let the pulls to the left or to the right take up all of your focus. Yield afresh to me. Abide in me, remain in me. Because I am your sound mind. I am your sanity. I am your wisdom. I am your discernment. I am your truth and your way and your life. I am the pillar by which you can stand. I am the anchor to which you hold on to. I am the backbone on which your life hangs and is being grown and developed. Let me be your everything. Let me be your everything. Thank you that you are the breath in our lungs, the fire in our bones, the word in our being. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God is speaking and working and moving in every one of our lives right now. I don't know if you've literally just been sitting there, kneeling, flat on your face, standing, whatever position you've been in. God has been, you've just been going, yes, 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 God, yes, yes. God is working and moving. Maybe just say to Him right now, Father, I yield to You. I yield. I yield. Why is it so important that we come into the presence of God, the tangible presence of God? Why is it so, so important? Because sometimes we can go about living our lives daily, doing this, doing that, and doing the other. And we don't realise the effects of all the noise and the voices out there that are having on us. And sometimes we can even get to the point where we think, well, I'm doing all right, everything's okay generally, yeah, yeah, everything's all right. And, and we begin to switch off a little bit, but we don't even realise it. And you know, when you come into the presence of God, especially times like this, where there's much more of the tangible nature of God, sometimes it can be like, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. Whoa, I've let things slip a bit. Whoa, hang on a minute. I want to come right back. I want to come right back where I know I need to be. And the amazing thing with the Holy Spirit, there is never, ever any condemnation whatsoever. The Holy Spirit never, ever leaves us condemned. He convicts and shows us, but He convicts and shows us in such a loving way 
that you go, Father, I want to be where you want me to be. I want to be right in alignment with you. So in this moment, wherever you are, Father, I yield to you. I yield right now everything, mind, emotions, will, body, heart, spirit, life, home, car, money, bank account, possessions, job, business, workplace, friendships, marriage, kids, school, college, university. I submit everything to you. I yield everything to you. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. Without you, it's just a noisy sounding gong, clashing cymbal. Without you, it means absolutely nothing. It's just stuff. So I yield afresh to you to be that instrument that is in tune with you. I don't want this to sound funny, but I know often people say, I keep seeing these numbers regularly or this, these things regularly and does that mean anything and I for quite a while I keep seeing 9-11 9-1-1 loads I look at my clock says 9-11 I look at something says 9-11 and I'm like God I keep seeing 9-11 everywhere and and he, he, he reminds me it's like Clive what did I say to you a few years back because 9-11 in America is the, you call 911, don't you, for emergency service when there's an emergency. And it's like they all said to me, remember what I showed you, the bell ringing, emergency, emergency, all hands on deck. And, it, and I just felt the Lord say to me, Clive, it's just a, a, a reminder to you constantly, you're in a time of emergency. You're in a time of emergency, all hands on deck. It's not... 9-11, or maybe God wants to give you a 9-11 car. It's not that. It's 9-11. It's emergency. Emergency. All hands on deck. And when there's an emergency and all hands on deck, there isn't time to play shuffleboard. <laughs> there isn't time just to go to the bar and just, well, I'll have another drink or we'll just do this. It doesn't mean God doesn't want us to have rest in our life. Don't get me wrong here. because God wants us to live in a place of rest with Him constantly. But we need to understand in that rest, the time that we are in, that it's not by might or my power, but it's by His Spirit in terms of what He's doing. But we're in a time where the bell is ringing, emergency, emergency, all hands on deck. Pastor Colin put something, I don't know, I can't remember how he said it, uh, last week, but he put it in such a way about how every one of our lives is so important in God's purposes and what he's doing. So, so important that every life matters. Everybody matters in terms of what he is, what he's doing. And in an emergency, all hands on deck, everybody is involved in that. And we have so much hope on the inside of us because we have the living hope. We have the one who is hope. And at this time and going forward for months and years ahead, the world is going to need the hope that we have, the anchor that we have, the stronghold of God that we have, the hope that we have. People who don't know Jesus, man, they need it more and more. So Father, we just yield and surrender afresh to you. For us to be the people you've called us to be, both individually and as a body. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. I just, during the worship, 
what an, what an amazing time, what a powerful time the worship was. It was just such a release. Why? Because that's what God's doing at this time. And this verse was just ringing, these two verses ringing around, uh, three verses actually, uh, real short ones, ringing around what we were worshipping. And it was from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, 17 and 18. Verse 16 says, be joyful always. It's like a command that the Apostle Paul gives to the Thessalonians. He's like, hey guys, in the midst of challenge and this and that and the other, all that's going on, he's saying, be joyful always. And it, it was a command. And, and while the worship was going on, partly oh, it was like, oh, you're so awesome. You're amazing. You're... But at the same time, this, this joy was rising up on the inside of, of like, wow, just want to rejoice in you. It says, be joyful always. Why? Because if you're not joyful, you get the opposite. You get start getting cheesed off and stuff starts overtaking you. How do you battle that? You, you say, hang on a minute, in the midst of this, I choose to rejoice. And in one sense, they might say, well, hang on, I'm, I'm denying my feelings. Exactly. What you want to do is, is get your eyes on Him and say, Father, I choose to praise You. I choose to rejoice in You right now so that everything in here lines up with everything of who You are. So the reality of who You are in me explodes in a fresh way. And then it says, be joyful always. Then the next verse, two words, pray continually. What does that mean? It means what we've been doing this morning, yield, stay yielded, stay in tune, pray continually, be mindful of, of, of the Holy Spirit, live through the day, walk through the day. The amazing thing is Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to have the one of who He is in us so that all the time during the day, no matter what we're doing, what we're facing, what's going on, whether at home, at work or wherever we may be, that we have the one in us, okay, that's constantly at work. So it's like pray continually, stay tuned in. At any given moment, you might be reminded of somebody or there's a challenge or this, that and the other. In the midst of that, it might simply just be, Jesus, help me right now. Or it might be, Jesus, I thank You for Your patience now. Or Father, I thank You for Your grace to forgive right now. Whatever it is, it's like pray, continue. It might be, Father, would You just touch that person's life right now. Whatever it is, pray, continue. Stay in tune with the Holy Spirit. Then the last one, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Sometimes in the midst of challenges to say, thank You, Lord. I thank You, Lord. In this circumstance, I praise Your Name and I rejoice in You. Man, sometimes that feels like, how do you do that? Well, simply just says, just give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Whenever I pray, and we were going to do something along these lines, I didn't know it was going to come out like this this morning, more as a prophetic word and, and all of that. We were going to pray through the 21 days take a minute to pray through every single day we've been through, the, the devotionals and everything, and just pray that into being. I, I want to encourage you, um, if you, if you didn't connect into the devotionals at all, maybe you didn't well, realise they were going on, but they're on the website, okay? And uh, under I Have Loved You and on the home page, click on it. And, and over the next 21 days, do one a day. If you've already done them, I'm going to do them again for the next 21 days. Why? Because it helps me abide in God's love. It helps me abide in the truth. It helps me abide in who I am and who He is in me. I don't know about you, but I've written all sorts of things down, what God's been saying to me and doing in me as a result of just being with Him in the Word, okay? So anyway, God's done it His way this morning. Not sure how I thought it was going to happen. But let's stay tuned into Him. There are some things I believe is right to share next week uh, regard some things that are going on around us, some of the questions that people are asking, some of the things that are going on. I believe it's right to address some of those. And I've been praying into some of that and really asking God to... And, and I, I don't know about you, but one of the things I've been praying at the moment is the thing that Solomon said to the Lord. When Solomon became king, uh, God said to him, what is it that you want? Ask me for something. What do you want? And, and Solomon's response to the Lord was, was, God, I do not know how to lead these people. So I ask you for a heart of discernment to know what is right and what is wrong. And that, what, that was his response to God. And God said, well, I love that. And he said, I'm going to give you wisdom more than anybody else on the planet. That was his 
response to Solomon in that moment. And you're going to know right from wrong, this, that and the other and all of, all of the things that God said to him in that moment. I believe that is a, is a prayer that every one of us needs to be praying at this time. Father, in the midst of everything going on, I don't know exactly what to think, how to handle that or, or, or what to do with that. So Father, I ask you for a heart of discernment to know what is right and what is wrong because I want to yield to you in everything that is going on, everything that is people are saying, I want to yield everything to you so that I stay on track. I don't get into this, that or the other and become part of the some of the issue out there, but I want to be part of the answer to what is happening out there. So I'm going to speak into some of that next week and I believe that's, that's really important. Uh, and so I'm just praying into some of that at the moment and asking God just for some clarity, some wisdom on some stuff. And I believe it's really, really important. Um, some of the practicals that are going on and, and, and what I believe God's saying into the midst of that and what is, what's happening. Want to keep up to date with all the latest news and events from Kingdom Faith Church? Then why not sign up for our church news weekly emails? You're free to unsubscribe at any time and we promise to never spam your inbox. Visit kf.church forward slash church news to subscribe today. You can also find out what's happening and when by checking out our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. To find your congregation, simply click on the link you're a part of on our website. Check out your church news email or search for us online.